This is it. The putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budget, and more, NetSuite is everything you need to grow, all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. Head to NetSuite.com slash C-Suite for special end-of-year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Today we're going to talk about ISBNs. What are they? How many do you need? What are they for? How do you leverage them? So, first of all, what is an ISBN? If you've been working in publishing at all, you'll know, or you may know, it stands for International Standard Book Number. It is the way that books are tracked from a metadata perspective. And these are all handled through Bowker, B-O-W-K-E-R. And the Bowker website is myidentifiers.com. So first of all, every book in whatever format needs at least one ISBN. How many it needs depends on how many different formats you have. So for um, to speak on a broader publishing level. If you have um, a print book that's in paperback, you need an ISBN for that format. If it's also in hardcover, you need a different ISBN for that. With an ebook, you likewise need another ISBN. If you have an enhanced ebook, and most often those are enhanced where you have um, an image, say like a children's book where there's a read along feature that's a, a common kind of enhanced ebook that requires yet another ISBN. And for audiobooks, our world, you need two different ISBNs unless you are only submitting through ACX. So here's why that is and which one you might, you should prefer. <laughs> so with ACX, because they are only distributing through Audible and through iTunes, but with a special agreement, they have their own numbering system. You may have seen in Amazon that you have ASINs. Those are Amazon numbers, and they apply within their ecosystem they apply a number to each of your projects. You, uh, when you're doing a print book through KDP Print, for example, you are able to enter your own ISBN numbers. With ACX, you are not. You're not given that option. And so uh, it's actually one of the things that I find as a negative that is uh, for using the ACX system is because you're not given that opportunity to connect your different audiobooks through your metadata online. So, we distribute through Authors Republic, where you do have the opportunity, and you need two ISBNs. So, one of those ISBNs is for audiobook retail, and the other is for audiobook library. Now, they're both the same format. They're both downloadable. 
And so if you're entering your information on Bowker, and we'll have a separate, uh, we can do a separate tutorial on that. But if you're entering it on Bowker, you would be looking at, the two entries would be pretty much identical, except that one is going to be used for library and one for retail. I can't actually speak to why they pull those apart. Uh, that's at a whole other level of operations that we're not a part of. But we do know that for the audiobook distribution, we need to supply those two distinct numbers. Now, let's get to how to get your ISBNs and what to do about them. The only place that you can get ISBNs, really, is through Bowker. If you're buying them under your own name and imprint, there are, as there is uh, through KDP and other publishing services, where they may offer you a free ISBN, one or more. In Authors Republic, they'll offer as an option, you can take two free ISBNs from them. What that means is that your audiobook will show up on the various retail platforms as published by Authors Republic. So what's better for you is as an author is if your ISBNs pull in the information showing that in fact you or your imprint are the publisher. Now, you might ask, well, why does that really matter? And the simple answer to that is, the more cohesive your information is online, the more cohesive your metadata is, the better off for you. It increases your visibility, your discoverability. It makes more sense in an online perspective to have all your metadata connected rather than looking like it's being published by, like this format's published by Amazon, this one's published by uh, Audible, this one's published by someone else. Instead, it pulls it all together, showing that, in fact, you are the publisher. You are the manager of the information for your book. So one of the best ways to, to move forward then is to actually go to Bowker and buy a block of ISBNs. Typically, for most of our clients, they're already going to be publishing in or have published in print and ebook, and ideally, they would have already done this and have typically some leftovers that they, because usually you buy them in a block of 10, it's far more cost effective than buying them one at a time. Also, just to let you know, if you are a member of IBPA, Independent Book Publishers Association, there is quite a nice discount on your ISBNs and on several other publishing services for that matter if you are a member of that professional organization. It's a wonderful organization. I highly recommend it. So that's one way that you can get them. Once you have those numbers, then keep them in a nice organized place where you can find them and you can track where they have been, uh, which formats they have been assigned to. So for example, in Bowker, you know, at, at myidentifiers.com, you manage your ISBNs. When you go in there, you select the number that you're going to assign to your particular format. Let's say it's print, okay? You're going to assign that number to the paperback print edition, and now those two are connected permanently, right? These are numbers that can't be assigned to somebody else. They remain your, uh, your property, your metadata. And on Bowker, you can go in and complete all the metadata information so that you have your book description, your bio, your cover image, uh, lots of information that is available to you to enter in that system so that you can manage your ISBNs well. When it comes to audiobooks, you would be then, again, taking two of those numbers and assigning them to audiobook digital download. If, let's say, you decide you really want your book your audiobook as a CD set, you can do that. And there's a different format that you would need 
for that set of ISBNs or for that format, not that set, but that format of your audiobook would then get its own unique ISBN and you would enter it into Bowker accordingly. In this way, you can go in and you can update your metadata, you can manage it. These are all really good things to be able to do. And I'm not saying that you would go in and do that frequently. You might never even go back and modify that. But having the ability to do so when it makes sense to do so. Here's, an, uh, here's one of those mo kinds of moments when it might happen. Let's say that a particular phrase is very popular at the time in search engines. And then, you know, back, let's say it's in the 90s, and you put a phrase in to describe your audiobook that everybody was searching on. And then that search term kind of wore out. It would be smart to go back into your, your ISBN account to manage your ISBNs for those particular titles and to update those words to better reflect the kind of searches that are happening on a regular basis. One of the things that, um, that this account or this management, this metadata is used for is let's say we have um, audiobooksnow.com. That is an audiobook retailer or audiobookstore.com. They will often, retail channels for audiobooks, will often pull their information from the information that is connected through Bowker. So they're actually pulling that information to then use on their posts for your audiobook. So it's really important to have that information filled in. It makes it much easier for them. You're in that metadata is also included, your suggested retail price. That doesn't mean that they will necessarily choose to sell it for your suggested retail price. No, re no retailer is bound by that, at least none that I'm aware of. They are, you can suggest prices, but they're not bound to those. So if you see your, your audiobook being sold at a price that was not what you said you wanted it to be sold for, don't be upset. Don't worry about it. The good news is they're out there trying to sell your audiobook, and that's a good thing for you. So I think that pretty much covers it for ISBNs. And if you have any questions about this, please reach out to us. We're available at proaudiovoices.com. And we always love hearing from our followers and our fans and being of service. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.